When one of Dick Grayson's most hated foe makes the move to Gotham, he'll need to team up with the Dark Knight if he ever hopes to solve this case. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Nightwing issue number 111 and find out what happens next, shall we? So then, as we join the book, we are actually not on the streets of Bloodhaven. Instead, we're in the alleys of Gotham City, where an all-too-familiar violent crime ends up taking place. An older man is murdered and his heart very literally cut out of his chest. Batman responds to the scene all too late. The man is dead and to make matters worse, he wasn't alone, as his son is cowering nearby. Obviously, this strikes a major mental and emotional chord with Bruce, as this all reminds him far too much of the darkest day in his life. In fact, in an absolutely amazing bit of artwork, we see Bruce begin to spiral, as we once again see images of the Wayne's death, followed by Alfred's reaction, then pull out even further to see the death of the Flying Graysons, and pull back to see Bruce in the Alfred spot. Seriously, this is a 10 out of 10 for visual storytelling, I literally feel like I'm inside Bruce's head while he grapples with all of these feelings. Now, obviously these heart-related slayings are very similar to the same crimes that Nightwing has been dealing with involving the serial killer known as Heartless over in Bloodhaven, and hey, wouldn't you know it, Dick just so happens to be visiting Barbara here in Gotham City, so when Batman calls for assistance, Nightwing is able to spring into action and back Bruce up. Naturally, Batman has to be a multitasker, which means when he's not investigating this brutal murder, he's also taking down a small arms trafficking ring. Nightwing lends a hand, finally shutting down the operation, and before you know it, the dynamic duo are back together and work in a case like old times. Batman even takes this opportunity to ask Dick about what he's been up to. Hey, I heard you're hanging out with that bee woman again. Uh, you and Barbara? Cool. Yes, they are indeed very cool. Batman theorizes that perhaps Heartless fled Bloodhaven after his last defeat at the hands of Nightwing, due in no small part to the fact that Nightwing has moved Titan's Tower to his own backyard. It's a lot harder to be a costumed serial killer when you have the world's fastest man, alien super women, and all-powerful cyborgs flying over your head. Batman even says that it's a great idea, and he wonders why he never considered moving the Justice League to Gotham. There's also a nice little bit in Bruce's internal monologue, too, when he says that Alfred used to tell him that Dick was his greatest accomplishment, but that Batman could never take the credit because, hey, old friend, you and I raised him together. He's both our greatest accomplishment. In fact, this whole issue is yet another big love letter to all the good work as a father Alfred did and how Nightwing is paying it back in his day-to-day -day life. Now, if the good guys are going to get to the bottom of this crime, they're going to have to interview the only witness, which is sadly the traumatized kid. Luckily, Renee Montoya totally forgot being angry at Batman and Nightwing after the events of Gotham War, and I mean, hey, good. And if you can believe it, actually getting through to the kid whose name is Iko is actually going to be a lot easier than anyone possibly could have assumed because, get this, the kid is actually a massive Nightwing fan. He even has his picture on his pencil case. What follows is actually an incredibly emotionally effective little scene wherein Nightwing opens up to the kid about the loss of his own parents. And while how the hurt never really went away, eventually he found other people who loved him just as much, and life went on. In fact, we get another snippet from Dick Grayson's early years at Wayne Manor. Apparently, Bruce wasn't sure about reading to him every night, considering that he was such a smart kid, he thought it would be a little demeaning. But Alfred said, of course, it's a good idea because it builds connection. It's a way for you to share worlds together. And I mean, hey, who doesn't love some Tolkien or a little bit of Muppets here and there? Sadly for poor Iko, he's an orphan now, too. His mother died in a car crash, and with his father slaying, it looks like he's going to have to go live with his Uncle Locke, a guy who seems nice enough, but who is clearly in over his head. The two were never exactly close when Iko's parents were alive, and while they ended up leaving behind a big fortune for the kid to inherit, Uncle Locke is gonna have to do a lot of work to bridge the emotional divide. Luckily, once again, Nightwing is there to offer up some advice, and hey, surprise, surprise, it's what Alfred and Bruce had done for him before, read to him, share with him, be his everything until he's ready to get his head above water. Nightwing was also able to walk away with a very important piece of evidence involving this murder. Apparently, the killer, whoever they were, or never actually spoke. This is important because Heartless loves to hear the sound of his own voice. Really loves to salt the wound and torture his victims by killing people who will be loved and missed. Meaning that there's a damn good chance Batman and Nightwing are actually dealing with a copycat killer right now. Bruce says that they should break into the morgue and do a little autopsy on the body themselves. He's ready to swing away like he always does, only for Nightwing not to follow, and that is because in a nice bit of following up on the previous arc, Dick, for whatever reason, is still 
still freezing whenever he's around heights, which is crazy considering that he's one of the greatest acrobats probably who ever lived. Batman's actually a little hurt that his son wouldn't share this information with him only for Dick to fire back. Oh yeah, when was I supposed to tell you this? When we were at each other's throats during that big Bat family turf war? Or during that time you were briefly a werewolf? And I mean, yeah, it, with lives like this, it's amazing that superheroes have any chance to stop, smell the roses, and talk at all, am I right? When the dynamic duo does get a chance to examine Iko's father's body, their worst fears are confirmed. The cuts and incisions are amateurish. Some of the heart was even left behind, something that Heartless would never do, meaning that they're almost certainly dealing with a copycat, but why Gotham and why now? Are they trying to get the attention of the real Heartless? Or are they simply trying to cover their tracks? And as the comic comes to a close, we get a better understanding as to why. You see, Uncle Locke isn't nearly as nice as he was made out to be. Looks like he wanted the family fortune to himself, and now that he sees that Nightwing is actively involved in this, he's starting to freak the hell out, kidnapping the kid and going on the run as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Nightwing issue number 111, everybody, and I gotta say, this issue was really damn good and a great way to kick off this brand new arc. I really do love how Tom writes the relationship between Bruce and Dick. It's just super positive and super feel-good. And all these different flashbacks with Alfred and how much they've learned from him and how much they're still trying to put his lessons to use in their lives, ugh, just, you know, tugged every one of my heartstrings. Hell, this is an arc where it looks like our villain is just a regular greedy dude who's hurting a child, and honestly, he's probably more frightening and more detestable than the last couple costumed foes we've had. Uncle Locke's evil is just so much more tangible and relatable, and I can't wait for Batman and Nightwing to kick that dude's ass. Overall, I'd give this one a wildly positive and enthusiastic 9 out of 10. Man, this Nightwing book, just when you think it's starting to slow down or that it might not be as good as it was, they absolutely kick in the turbos. And remind you why this is one of DC's absolute must-read books. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way everyone, I will see you again next time, Bye bye